Okay, I'm going to do um, a video to help you with the review for chapter 11. So you can take, take notes on this if you want. Um, my recommendation would be for you to try the chapter 11 review, and then I'm going to do about 15 of them, maybe a few more, and then you'll need to do the rest of them. Remember to have the review worked out and um, ready to turn in on test day. All right, so at the beginning, there were some factoring problems. This is just to kind of keep you thinking about factoring because we're going to need to use it later. So the, that section that says um, to factor completely. All right, I just thought I'd do a few of those. Some of the types of factoring aren't going to be so important for quadratics, though, but I thought I'd do them anyway. Like number two, we don't do a lot of factoring by grouping. So I thought you might have trouble with this on the review. So I wanted to help you with it. Okay. Number three, you should be able to handle that one okay, but I thought we'd look at it. And then I thought I would do five and six. Five was 8p to the third minus one. And on six, I've got 16y to the fourth minus 56y cubed minus 32y squared. Okay. All right. So these are just factoring, not solving. So we're just going to get them factored and then stop. All right. So this has four terms. Nothing's common to all four. So you do factoring by grouping, either using the box or using the regular way. So if I factored out the r squared, there'd be an r plus one left. If I factor out the eight, there'd be an r plus one left from there. And then that r plus 1 is common to both terms, right? This r plus 1 right here is common. So we'll pull that r plus 1 out of both of those. And then what's left is r squared plus 8. And that is a squared, but 8 is not a perfect square. And also that's a plus sign between them. So that can't break down anymore. And that's where you'd stop if it said factor completely. Now just a note. If said solve, okay, it doesn't, but if it said solve, then you would, and it, and it said for you to solve this problem, you could have factored like we did, gone through all that work. It would have taken you a while, but you'd get into here. And now that you know what you do, you could set each factor equal to zero, okay? So it didn't, but if it said to solve, we could go on and we would get r equals negative 1. And then on this one, see how it's missing the, the term that's just r to the first power? So we could come in here and subtract 8 and get our r squared equals negative 8 and then square root both sides, making sure we get both the positive and the negative square root. And we'd have r equaling positive or negative and see that negative means I'm going to have an I and 8 is 4 times 2 or you might have gone all the way to 2 times 2 times 2. So there'd be a 2 outside with an I. Let me move that over just a little so it's not going to be so scrunched. I'm going to have 2I square root of 2. So this one had a cube in it and we would have, not there, but... If it had been a problem that I had asked you to solve, it had a cube in it, so it should have three solutions, and here they are. Okay, but again, this problem did not say to solve, so we didn't do that on this problem. We just got it factored. All right, now on problem number three, we're trying to factor, and it's to the fourth power. There's only two terms, so it's not a cube formula. We're just going to do an x squared and an x squared, a 4 and a 4, with 1 minus and 1 plus. Then, since these are squared, we're going to try to break it down more, so we should get x and x, 2 and 2, 1 minus and 1 plus. But that one is a plus between the two, and we can't break it down anymore, so that would be our final answer, okay, if we were just asked to factor. All right. All right. Now I wanted to look at number five on that one. Oh, and, and let me just comment, you know, if it's if this one said solve, 
you would have the skills to be able to solve it. If you had this and it said to solve, you could do all that work we did earlier to get it completely factored. And then you could set each factor equal to zero. So all that factoring is kind of getting you to where you can solve things. Then you would add 2 to get x equals 2, subtract 2 to get x equals negative 2. Here I would use the square root method to finish this up. So I'd move the 4 over, getting a negative 4 on the right, and I would come in and do the square root of both sides. And when I did, I'd have plus or minus the square root of 4, and that would be plus or minus 2i. So that one had degree 4, then I would have expected 4 answers, 2, negative 2, plus 2i, and then minus 2i, and there would be my four answers. Okay, but it didn't really say solve, so we didn't do that. Okay, all right, now on the next one that I'm, I'm doing as an example, it's a cube, two terms with a cube, nothing common. So that's the one where you're going to think about the formula. Leave a little space. The formula for a cubed minus b cubed tells you you're going to have two things and then three. This will be a minus b, then a squared plus ab plus b squared, okay? All right, so then what you got to do is you have to think about what to use for your a. So that's when you think about how, well, that's really 2p that got cubed. This is really 1 that got cubed. So in place of the a, you're going to put 2p. In place of the b, you're going to put 1. So this will be 2p minus 1. 2p quantity squared, 2p times 1, and then 1 quantity squared. So it'd be 2p minus 1 times 4p squared plus 2p plus 1, okay? Now, if that problem had said for you to solve, we could have set these equal to 0, and this is a quadratic, so we could just use the quadratic formula to figure it out, okay? So... Where these just say to factor though, so let me just not do that again. I won't go on and show you what you could do to solve. All right, so let's look at number six. Okay, so on number six here, there is something common to all three terms. I can see a y squared is common. I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Okay, so number six was just a factoring. Let me move it over a little bit. And it was asking you to factor 16y to the fourth minus 56y cubed minus 32y squared. So you can see there's a y squared com common. And then in addition to that, let's see, 8 would go into all of those. So this would be 2y squared minus 7y minus 4. And that's squared, so I'm going to try to break it down again. I'm not going to leave off that 8y squared, though, so let me write it so I remember to include that. Then I'll use a 2y and a y. And I'm trying to get a 7 in the middle, and I know I can't put a 2 or a 4 right there. So I'm going to try 4 and 1. And, yep, I think that'll work because that'll be 8y, and that'll be 1y. So this needs to be a minus. This needs to be a plus. So there you have it. Okay? And this one, final answer on that one was there because this, this second part, remember, doesn't ever break down anymore. All right, so those were just some of the factoring problems there at the top. All right, let me go ahead and look at problem one problem from the solve by factoring. Okay, so there I didn't give you a choice. I asked you to solve by using factoring, okay, for all of those, even if something else would have worked. So why don't I look at, say, number 9. Okay, It had x times x minus 3 equals 18. All right, so this is one where whoever did the problem tried to factor before they should have is the way to think about it. You re really needed it equal to zero before you factored. So we have to unfactor. We have to distribute that x squared back. Okay. Then we'll subtract the 18. So we do get it equal to zero. See, that's important if you're factoring or using the quadratic formula. And then now I'm going to try to factor. Nothing's common, so I'm going to use just unfoiling at this point. Use an x and an x, 
And with 18, I'm thinking about 1 and 18, 2 and 9, or 3 and 6. So I'm thinking 3 and 6. I've got to be a little careful here. Let's see. If I put a minus on the 6 and a plus on the 3, that should work. And then I'm ready to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. And there's your two solutions, negative 3 and 6. Okay. All right. So solving by factoring, you've already been tested on that, but you'll, you will see that on this test. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to stop this video and go ahead and do another one that gets at quadratic formula and the square root method.